Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is for three minute rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. Introducing to you firstly, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the black glove shorts, trimmed with a gold spangled effect. At the way, he scaled 10 stone exactly. He hails from the Andrew Low Camp in Newark. Here is Fonz Alexander. And opposing him, boxing out of the red corner, wearing the black colored shorts, trimmed with green. At the way, he scaled 10 stone, five pounds. His excellent undefeated record, five contests, five wins. Hailing from Wigan, here is Andrew Fleming. <laughs> Timekeeper Gary Brennan, referee once more. From Leeds, Andy Brook. Four three minute rounds. Okay, gents. You both know the rules, obey my commands at all times, defend yourselves at all times. Let's touch rules, let's have a good clean fight. So Andrew Fleming now booking the trend by not by coming out to fairy tale in New York. A lot of people are trying to ban that song for the, the use of a word, but I think that's ridiculous and I'm glad Andrew came out to that one. It's a good festive song. Yeah, I was keeping an eye out of the uh, sense of the uh, word that's been questioned, but you know, uh, he's getting people in the crest festive feeling and it's not long until Christmas now and uh, he's going to hope to give all of his uh, fans a present with a victory tonight. And you know, lot, you know a lot about Fleming, how has he been looking in recent weeks? He's, he's been working really hard. He's been training as hard as, uh, as hard as normal really he said he's feeling in the best condition I know it's cliche but he said it's the best condition he's ever felt and he, he's been working his socks off he's um, he's recently gone back to university at uh, UCLan to study sports coaching but um, he, he's still working hard and training every day he's, his effort levels are commendable and that's what you want I mean it's good that he's gone back to university to get himself a bit of a, a, bit, a bit of a backup in case the boxing doesn't work out for him yeah, it's like a contingency plan because you, you never know in boxing. It's it's one of those sports. It only takes one injury and it can end prematurely. So it's good to see he's got a little bit of a contingency plan going on. And he's looked good in the first minute or so of this fight. Uh, university educated and he's shown good educated pressure so far. And he's been good with the left hand. Yeah, he's piling on the pressure at the moment. It's been it's a, been a good opening uh, minute, as you said. Andrew's, Andrew Fleming's currently 5 and all. He's yet to win a stoppage. Uh, has he spoken to you about that? He, he's kind of... He would like a stoppage, like every boxer would, but he's not too concerned. He's uh, happy outboxing his opponents. He, he likes to show his, his boxing ability. And um, I know at Ask the VIP there's a friendly rivalry. Who gets a first stoppage? I think I've mentioned it before. and yeah. We're still waiting on that one. It could be Adam Ridge next Sunday uh, or, or Kyle, but... We'll see tonight if uh, Fleming could break the uh, mould. And if not, they can take it into the new year, can't they? It'll give them something to uh, compete over at the start of the year. Yeah, it'll, uh, it'll go on until someone breaks the duck, definitely. And Fons Alexander, six wins, 90 defeats. Uh, of his six wins, four of them will come by way of stoppage. Of his 90 defeats, four of them again by way of stoppage. So we know we know what we, what to expect with the Fons. We've seen it week in and week out. He comes and he extends uh, the prospects of full distance and I expect this one's got a four, four rounds as well. He actually got a very impressive win in uh, October against Jack, Jack Newham, who was a uh, 4-0, so Fleming has to be wary tonight. It's probably the biggest fight he's been in so far. Yeah, and Fons won that one in the fourth round, fourth and final round. He KO'd him with a left hook, uh, one minute, 46 seconds for the round. So like you say, it's a good bit of form for him. He went on to lose his next five fights, but sometimes when you get a little win like that, it can be a little bit of a boost to you as well. Yeah, everyone, everyone loves to win, and it's a nice little morale booster, and um, I'm sure... He'll be hoping to uh, get another win tonight. We've had a message from Julie Fleming saying, come on, Andrew, you are the best. I suspect they may be uh, related. Mick from the Wild House Boxing Gym says Andrew's looking nice and sharp so far, and I would agree with that. He's got to be happy with the first round. He's, he's looked really strong, and Damien Jones will just be um, giving his marching orders now and seeing what they could do in the second round. And as you say, Fleming looked good in that first round. He went out there, didn't do anything silly, just established his own jab, established his own work as well, and didn't give really Fonz anything that he could work off or anything that Fonz could use to try and get himself into the fight. Yeah, he's been doing really, really well closing any openings that Fonz could have, but he's going to be, got to be hoping for more of the same, really. And maybe as the rounds go on, he gets more confident. Uh, maybe Stoffish could be in, in line, but as you said earlier, um, it's, it's hard to stop the fun, so it'll take something special. Yeah, we'd expect an off a distance fight on this one, and it's a good learning experience for Fleming, but as you say, 
Uh, next year they might start getting more stoppages in the gym and they might be uh, inundated with stoppage wins. Yeah, they could all they could all come at once. Uh, they the wait the year for uh, just one out of the three of them. And it must be nice for you as well to be able to go down to a gym like that where it's flying and you've got lots of people you can talk to. Yeah, it's always interesting. They've they've got a really good uh, relationship. All three of them, they're, they're the best of mates, and they always train together. They're always pushing each other. Um, I know that there's sometimes where they have darker days where they get a little bit frustrated with diets and they help each other push through because they're all going through the same and it's good that they all have that understanding and respect and as well they're always pushing each other in our competitions and they all want to be the best and that's a admirable yeah the diet's always the worst thing for a professional fighter um, yeah. on many occasions he's go to Jamie Moore's house to interview him and I've, I've had a few chocolate biscuits and Jamie'd look at me uh, with a look that said he wanted to maybe take the chocolate biscuits and throw them in the bin but I managed to eat them all, so sacrifices had to be made at the time. Yeah, Andrew uh, loves his food. He's, uh, he's told me before, he said, he can go ages without having an alcoholic drink, but it, it's a food that really gets him. Yeah, and it's like that with a lot of fighters as well. But I know Billy Joe Saunders likes his food as well, so uh, it's hard when you're dieting, but you've got to make those sacrifices, haven't you? Yeah, it's just one of those things, but I'm, I'm sure it'll all pay off. Jade Dermott, she's in Lapland at the moment, but she's still sending good luck wishes out to Andrew. It just shows how uh, worldwide VIP boxing is as well, because we're getting... Yeah, it's good. We've got the streams. Anyone can watch them around the world. Uh, we've got Tegan Crosto new. I hope I got that right, saying, come on, un Uncle Andrew. Uh... Layla Boo said Andrew looks too good to be fighting someone like the Fonz, but someone has told Layla sometimes some guys like the Fonz, they lose a lot of fights, but they've a good yardstick for someone like Fleming. Uh, it gives them a chance to get some rounds, and as John Pegg said earlier tonight, someone like the Fonz, if they see an opening, they will take it. So, for example, if the Fonz started landing right hands or left hooks and trying that shot over and over again, it'd be a way for Fleming to know that maybe he's got a gap in his defence. And one of the main things for me is, obviously, you see the records of journeymen, um, people saying, oh, maybe he's not very good, or records are only numbers it doesn't represent how well they perform and Fonz takes a lot of rounds off her uh, prospects and Fleming will do really well tonight to come uh, unscathed yeah and it's all about how Fleming looks he's looked good he's looked relaxed so far he's got good movement he's not got too carried away when he's landed decent shots as well so it's all it all balls quite well for Fleming tonight his own left hand is a little bit low but he's got nothing really to unduly worry him coming in the other direction a little bit like a game of chess at the moment. They're both um, eyeing, vying for a position. We'll, we'll see if uh, anything opens up in the uh, next few rounds. So another good round there for Fleming under his belt. He, as I say, he's not going to get any surprises from the funds. He knows what to expect. He knows that the funds is going to come, cuff her up and try and uh, extend in the full four rounds. I'm on with Jay Whittle, who's an expert at the local team over there in Wigan and Lee. So, uh, any questions I've got about the fights in that area, Jay's the first person I go to. I think you, you should use the term expert very loosely. Um, oh, yeah, I've been using that term loosely about myself for the past 10 years. That's a so called boxing writer, Jay, so don't worry about that. I think it was another nice round for Fleming, wasn't it? If you've seen him box off, more often than me, and you've seen him in the gym as well. Is that, is that the kind of have we seen this best form or do you think there's some, still something left to come? I think there's many more gears to come. We're, we've just seen the start of Andrew Fleming. Uh, in an in interview before the, uh, for the last week, he was saying to me how he wants to uh, treat fans to more explosive displays. In his last bout against Lee Connolly in uh, September, uh, he piled on the pressure and almost caused an early stoppage. But I know he's going to be looking for stoppages in the future and he's got so many sides to him. Uh, he's traditionally a southpaw boxer, but... He can transition to any style to adapt to his uh, opponent's tactics, and not many not many boxers can have that skill. Most of them are quite uh, one-dimensional, so to have so many styles in his locker, he's got got so many weapons at his disposal. And of course, that can be useful when he steps up in class and he's fighting a championship-caliber opponents, being able to do different things. And sometimes you might have to change things a couple of times in a fight as well. If things are not going your way, it's always good to be able to be uh, to adapt and improve. Yeah, you've got to be flexible to what your uh, opponent brings and. The best thing for Andrew is he can be un unpredictable. Uh, 
his opponents won't know which Andrew Fleming will turn up on that night and that makes him more dangerous. Uh, we've had John A. Moore saying Fleming's moving really good here. I'd, I'd have to agree with that, as you say. Uh, he's got good movement. Fleming can also his way around the ring. And he's always just out of range of punches. Fon's caught him on the ropes a little bit there and managed to let, get a few shots through, but nothing really with any impact or nothing landed too clean. Fon's is growing into the bout as it, as it goes on and, and deepens, but Andrew still looks in control and I'm sure he'll be a delight with performance so far. Early, early said the Fonz is looking for that left hook. That's a fair point. He's tried throwing that left hook, uh, left hook a couple of times on the ropes, but he's had no joy with it just yet. So we'll we'll keep a lookout for that for you, Lee. And the thing with Fleming as well, he's 25, we should say, he's, he's back at university as well, so he's obviously a smart guy and he's, he's thinking about his future long term, not just in terms of the boxing. Yeah, he's, he's, always, he's always been quite forward thinking, he's always one step ahead and obviously with, with the nature of boxing, I think I mentioned earlier, it's, it's so unpredictable and he wants to uh, secure a good fam future for uh, himself and for, uh, for a 25 year old you've got to praise that and praise the awareness as well that I know he's enjoying his life as a professional boxer but with a snap of the fingers it, it could be all over so he's he's thinking about that as well yeah a few fighters Jack Catterall I was talking to recently did the same thing he thought about his education first uh, a lot of fighters they go straight into boxing at an early age and don't think about what they're going to do next but it's a, a long time you're a long time retired in boxing so I like to see fighters get an education or get a trade behind them yeah he's got a, a lot of flexibility what he can go into now in the, in the future with his degree and I'm sure as well he'll be a I think he's a, a level 3 coach as well um so he helps out a lot with the Ask the VIP kids and the uh, upcoming boxers. Uh, the, uh, the lads at Ask the VIP um, are seen as role models by the youngsters and it's really nice to see how um, Andrew works with the younger younger talents as well. A few weeks ago, um, Andrew came to a Bundles Boxing House show uh, to support a young lad and I thought that was quite nice for him to see and it shows um, his humane, humane side as well. So. Just a bit of information for anyone who's watching this stream on Facebook. After this fight, the Facebook stream will cut out briefly for 30 seconds. You just need to go to Only 4 Fights or VIP Boxing to watch the second part of this show. So make sure you do that. Give it 30 seconds if it doesn't come through straight away. Uh, refresh the stream. If you're on an Internet Explorer, get on Firefox because it's much better. But as I say, go on and Chrome is even better. My producer's telling me, but I'm not having that on Firefox all the way. But we'll see we'll give we'll give it a bash later but just jump on those streams again make sure you join us for part two because we've got a lot more a lot more action coming your way uh, philly Moggs has told us that the funds always has a good last round so keep a lookout for that going into this final round johnny moore says fleming can see everything funds is throwing and is one to watch for the future and julie fleming says andrew you're doing your anti proud lad And as Jay was saying, outside the ring as well, Andrew Fleming is working with the local, young local fighters. The same type of stuff we see Anthony Crawler doing as well. Anthony Crawler is always at local amateur shows as well to support the uh, the grassroots, and it's nice to see as well. It's fantastic to see. It's always nice when a, a, a sportsman comes back to his uh, roots and re remembers when he was a child and when professionals used to come and help him out. So it's always nice to see people give back and not forget where they came from. Even though he's uh, obviously fighting on a massive show tonight. Loads of, loads of his friends, family supporting him and he's still thinking about the, the future of Asa VIP. And that's good because if he goes on to become a, even a British or any other kind of title, those, those fans will remember that. Remember John Murray going into local schools with his British title and showing the people in the local schools that you can work hard and go on to uh, great success. And that's what Andrew's doing as well in this round, he's showing his boxing skills. Uh, the Fonz usually has a good strong last round as we've seen in the past, but Fleming has just completely outmaneuvered him and bamboozled him in this round. Nicola Roberts is saying smashing cuts, so I'm assuming that's another member of the Flam Fleming family tuning in. 
Ryan Edmonds has asked who else is fighting so if you come and join us on part two of this show you'll be seeing Muhammad Ali against Ben Fields Jack Rafferty against Radoslav Mitev James Moorcroft fights William Warburton and I'd recommend looking out for that fight that one could be the fight of the night we've got Jack Flatley against Angel Emilov and then we've got Jack Cullen against Thomas Bedstover And this looks like another round for Fleming, you know, to uh, four rounds on the night. I'm, I've got him 40-36 if that's the case, and he's not put a foot wrong so far tonight. He's been very impressive throughout. He's, he'll have no complaints about his performance. He's not given Fons any openings or any chance. He's, he's read everything he's thrown at him, and you've got to be proud of that. And I'm sure the, uh, all of his fans watching here tonight and on the Facebook stream will be uh, proud of his performance. And, Rightly so. And after tonight, Andrew Fleming will be looking at it. will be 6 and all, no stoppages, but as you say, he's not unduly worried about that at the moment. All of his fights so far have been four rounders. He's, uh, he's only had one shared round by the look of it in the fight, and that was against Lee Connolly in his last fight. So he's definitely one to watch, and maybe next time out, he might be looking at six rounds, maybe. Yeah, um, he is hoping. He think he knows he's ready for a six rounder. Uh, maybe it'll come early next year, but we'll leave that to the matchmakers. But I know Andrew, and I know he's ready for them six round fights. He's a talented lad as we've just seen tonight and he's always impressive he always improves after every fight and everyone's watching seeing that tonight i don't need to actually say that and i've got it 40 36 for fleming i imagine uh sargentson who's scoring this on the behalf of the referee brook has got it the same as well and if any viewers are wondering why the uh the referee is not judging this fight it's because this referee is a novice referee just learning his trade so they have some, another referee outside the ring who, who scores a fight for him uh, just so he's not, not got the distraction trying to score the fight while officiating it as well. Big laugh from Damien Jones there, if you can hear from the camera, but Damien will be delighted from Andrew tonight. Damien's a fantastic coach and um, he works really hard 24-7 uh, with all the Asking IP lads. Just had twins as well, so I know he's had a lot of sleepless nights, so this will make it a lot better. Yeah, when you're looking forward to Christmas, then I imagine... Ladies and fight. gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing action, Referee Darren Sargent is scoring for Andy Brooke has scored the contest 40 points to 36 points for your winner. Now undefeated in six professional contests, hailing from Wigan, Andrew Fleming. So that's expected, the shutout. And a round of applause, please, for a young man who's going back to a lovely part of the country, New York, Fons Alexander. Okay, we're about to cut. <laughs>